Good evening everybody and welcome to the Grinning Cogwheels Greyhawk campaign. I am joined by, I'm starting from the left to the right, Alan as Xerxes, Mickey as Siren, Byron as Cyan, Peter as Carolus, Richard as Carcarius, and Neville as Beiru. And I am your DM for tonight, Gordon. Um, when we last saw our heroes, oh and I must also just mention before I go on with the hero thing, that sound is provided by the awesome Sirenscape, because Epic Games need Epic Music, and of course we are running our game on Fantasy Grounds Unity. Uh, Unity is still in early access, so please be aware that there might be some minor glitches that happen every now and again. Alright, moving along. To summarize what happened to our adventurers when we saw them last, they had left the town of um, Saltmarsh on a mission for the town council to ascertain why the lizard folk A have an encampment so very close by that nobody ever knew about and more importantly why are they stockpiling iron weapons uh, these are not typically weapons found um, in use by lizard folk um, which had the town council a little bit suspicious. They wanted to know, are these lizards planning something ill for Saltmarsh or somewhere else in the region? Um, but then, in any case, they procured the services of this little adventuring troop to basically go on a somewhat of a fact-finding mission. Diplomacy is preferred over brute force, however. I will remind you of that because, yeah, murder hobos. <laughs> um, have I forgotten? Beiru, Beiru, very diplomatic. Yeah, me too, obviously. <laughs> um, Yay! Well, they were traveling by boat that was provided by Gill and Prime Water. They noticed a couple of interesting landmarks. Um, along the coast as they were passing by, one being the Tower of Xenopus, another, well, the thing that they're looking for at the moment is the promontory, the uh, high ground that basically sticks out a bit into the um, Azure Sea, um, where, according to the crude map that they had recovered aboard the Sea Ghost, um, this is where the lizard folk hide out encampment, whatever you'd like to call it, um, is supposedly situated. So, they were waylaid on their way down the coast by, oh, I mustn't forget, there is a huge once in a century storm brewing um, out on the Azure Sea to the south of them and they basically made haste to leave town before it hit town itself but they are still a little bit ahead of the storm at this point while they were making their way there they had a bit of a yeah they got waylaid by sahagan the sharky fishy people who speak gobbledygook less so for siren since she can't <laughs> comprehend languages which actually reminds me mickey what oh. is the duration for comprehend languages I seem to recall it being an hour, but I'm not sure. Uh, an hour, yes. Okay, so you still got that up and running for a little while, um, but after your battle in which there was uh, an exchange of clerical battle magics, um, <laughs> you still have a few of these Sahagan corpses on board. Um, one of them kept on falling off and just decided to swim away. Um, but yes, you have survived that encounter, though you are, most of you guys, are quite wounded. Um, I just want to open up the other side so I can get the combat tracker. I wanted to um, explore the, well, investigate the, the bodies, especially the, the caster. So, make me an investigation. I'm just gonna, so, I'm just gonna do this. Because you wanted me to do that. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Okay. You nice. I got a two. Ah. <laughs> so I was being poisoned. Oh god damn it. Lower is better, right? I mean. <laughs> yes, that's 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 how it works. Um, cool. Are we, all, are we all allowed to investigate? I could have helped. Yeah. If you guys are basically looking around, uh, checking out the bodies and that. All right. So. Uh, had somebody not rolled? Yes, Byron. Oh, Bims. Ha ha ha. <laughs> Bims also investigating. <laughs> I don't think Bims has an investigation skill. So Bims no. is looking for food. <laughs> There's no food on these guys. So he no. Won't <laughs> no, no, he's just seeing if they are edible. <laughs> Shine needs to swap with me for food. Alright, so having a look <coughs> at what these guys have on them, these warriors, these Hagen warriors that have been left over. Um, their spears are fairly crude. They're not made out of metal, so they're not going to be worth anything in terms of resale value. The same goes for their strange um, makeshift armor that you can't even identify what it's made out of, you know, other than, you know, it's got, it seems to have some bits of some sort of um, leather and uh shall shall work you know basically embossing certain areas um you do also however find a number of little items um how many did you kill i'm trying to recall was it <laughs> no it was not 200 of them but they basically each have a little pearl on them it was like eight or nine i guess i'm guessing It's about one and a half times what we are. Mm. Hold on. Give me a second. So I'm just trying to find the correct, the correct <coughs> one. Oh, Kidoki. This is not one of them. Ah, there we go. So, on their persons, you find a number of pearls, and I'm going to that. You find six of them. I will put them in the inventory. On the cleric, however, you do find um, that pendant that she was clutching. Um, it's not only... Um, what appear to be shark's teeth. In the center of the shark's teeth is a very <coughs> interesting looking pearl. It is a black pearl. Not the black pearl, a black pearl. <laughs> not to be, I'm not treading on any of Disney's toes. And I am putting that in the inventory as well. It's worth a fair amount of money, about 500 gold pieces. Let's not lose it. Say again, sorry, Mickey. Let's not lose it. <laughs> Let's not lose it. So, well, who is anybody laying claim to it, first of all? Well, yeah, we shared, right? So, yeah, we shall uh, share it. So, each of you are going to take a, a pearl, basically. Um, and then the black pearl, are you just going to keep it in the unassigned thing for now? Until you yeah. get to town. Cool. Um, cyan. You would have found the the pearl in that. You also find that the cleric is carrying a small waterproof pouch that can contain 70 gold pieces. Oh, but, nice. But, but it's it's strange. These coins are... There's some of the coins from Kierland that you are very familiar with. There's also coins from other places that you can recognize as coming from the Sea Princes, Principalities, um, and from a couple of other more distant places that you don't recognize the coinage. So you assume fairly safely, fairly reasonably, that these coins are probably what she salvaged from other mariners that she or her people at least have uh, ambushed along the way. Okay, um, so there's 70 gold in there, you say? Mm -hmm. Alright, I'm going to put that towards the communal pot, but I'm going to keep the water skin pouch for myself. And say, hey guys, look at what I found. Just gold. <laughs> <laughs> um, I believe you. 
It's so much gold. I don't know how she kept it in her pockets. Um, and then, yeah, I'm gonna keep that sack. That uh, that what, what is the waterproof? Proof, waterproof. Yeah. Nice. It says my. So uh, there isn't actually an item like that. So just you uh, can just create one in your inventory. Just uh, okay, okay. a little custom add item. Um, mm. And then just type in waterproof uh, bag. <laughs> Thank you. How big is it, do you reckon, like, um, size-wise? Not very. It's like, a, it's like a belt pouch, basically. Um, so maybe... Uh, I'd say you could probably fit maybe... Big, it, big enough for your communication device. A <laughs> 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 little bigger than that. Um, cause, I mean, she was quite a large lady. Um, fish lady. So, you, uh -huh. what, what did you call them? <laughs> Not, not Sahagan, what were they last week? Shenanigans. She was a large yeah. shenanigan. Shenanigan. Um, <laughs> but I'd say that this thing could probably hold about a square foot's worth of something in it. That's, Ooh, that's fairly foot. large. Nice, thank you. Um, it is, you know, it hangs longer than it is wide. If we can put it there, nice. Alright. Alright. Um, what would you like to do? Other than investigating these corpses? Share that gold out now. Um, I mean, it's. I think we need to move there. Eh? Yeah. Investigate well, corpse, throw overboard. Well, technically. Investigate right. corpse, throw overboard, <laughs> carry on. Okay, so you're throwing all the corpses overboard? Yes. As we do, I'm just gonna do a small prayer to. Smell fish. I'm just gonna say for Glacia and throw them all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd, I'd, I'd like to say, no, 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 these these are bounties of the sea, these are for our gods. You and then have... I've already started throwing one over, it's for Glacia, I'm going on to the next <laughs> one. I'd like to grab one, I'll grab one of the bodies, and I say, I say, for us, from, for us, from. Glacia, <laughs> just a bit louder than he does. <laughs> girls, girls, you're both pretty. Come on. Oh my god. <laughs> See, seeing what's happening, I'm just going to walk away and go into the cabin and pray a bit. It's like, I'm, I'm not dealing with this shit. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, but I'll just while, tell them all this is happening... Into, Sorry? Whisper into... Tell them to whisper into uh, Cyan's mind for Glacia. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Bims will do that. So Byron, or should I say Cyan, you hear this draconic voice in your mind saying, Bosses! Foglacia! Foglacia! <laughs> oh, no, 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 not again, not again! Just ignore him. Swats the air around my head. Um, <laughs> <laughs> for Osprum! Osprum! Um, uh, While all this is sing. happening, the ship is actually still on course well yeah. relatively it's 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 i would have, would have assumed that before you let go of the steering wheel you would have hooked it somehow propped something <laughs> in there to keep it from changing your course um so you have been going a little bit but i mean it's not like you've made you know you've gone a, maybe a couple of hundred feet or something um as you you know are calming down and everything um would you guys like to take some sort of short rest yeah, um, I just want to actually check my spells. Do we do that in turns then? Yeah, I'll say basically over the next while you're while you're traveling, you can um, have a couple of people having a look around. Um, unless you have a spell that you want to use. Yeah, but the one spell that would actually come in handy now is not prepared. <laughs> <laughs> Shit! <laughs> oh well, stiffies for you then. Um, but yeah, if you want to, uh, yeah, you can easily over the next hour and a half or so, uh, you know, make little rotations, three people resting, three people not. Is there anybody who wasn't seriously, seriously hurt? I think the least hurt is currently Bims. <laughs> and I'm so Yeah. Well, I still got 15 damage. So yeah, um, I'm not going to complicate it. Um, roll your hit die. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Uh, Terrible. That could have been better, uh. Corollas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wait, what? I'll just Why? have that. Why does Cyan have such a high modifier? Something does not compute. 
I rolled my hit die at the bottom, yeah. <coughs> yeah, but over there it says mod 2 con. <coughs> um, I don't know, I rolled the die that's next to hit die at the bottom of my... Yeah, that should, that that should be it. Hmm. Oh. Osprum blesses me. <laughs> Apparently. In abundance. <coughs> Smelling uh, now. Where, where was the wording on that? Well, my con is plus three. Yeah. So I'm going to take that mod of two away. I don't know why it's doing that. That's something strange. Is not. Is there some sort of effect on you? Where's Where's you? Oh, there's no effect on you in in the combat tracker. So that's bloody weird. I feel blessed. <laughs> What is the actually actually the dice that you rolled a seven? Uh, so you would then it would just have been a ten. So you would be on twenty four <coughs> then. Okay. So you mostly mostly healed up. The bleeding has stopped. Don't know if you want to use <laughs> any more hit die. Um, should I try to roll it again? <laughs> you could try. We can see what it says. Yeah. Mod two con. What the hell? Maybe it's giving me two. It's giving me two modifiers instead of one, because my con is my modifier is plus three and it's plus, uh, plus six. It's double, yeah, it's doubling this con. It. Yeah, it's but giving me two no modifiers. There's no effect that I can see that would there would be, would be a reason for that to be happening. That's that's weird. Oh well, let's let's not bother too much about that at this point. It's some sort of glitch that I will try and figure out later. We'll just know to deduct three points <laughs> every time you use it. Um, uh, I would also like you guys to make me another round of perception checks. That's everybody on the ship, please, including Bims, and with disadvantage, unless you have something that gives you advantage, which means you just make a straight roll. Perception. Hey! Really nice. Is everyone yes. disadvantage. It was a twenty and a seventeen, so. Yeah. <laughs> Should everyone Just roll? Give me the give me the twenty that you dropped. <laughs> oh, you have to bend down to pick it up. <laughs> All right. So, okay. as you've been travelling for a while now, you two, that being Cyan and Siren, with your twenty and seventeen respectively, you respectively, respectively, sorry, uh, you guys notice. <laughs> Not a natural one. As you are traveling along this coastal area, um, Xerxes and Cyan, since you are busy keeping an eye out for these rocks, you're dodging most of them. But as you're traveling, you start seeing um, on the coast that it's, it's sort of like there's a little bit of a, a, a incline happening, and you can just make out what appears to be a pathway. Um, that starts up, and just after this pathway that follows along the coast starts up, you see a bit of a change in the scenery as well. What was mostly just, you know, scrub and grass and so on and so forth, you start seeing what looks like, like mango, mangrove swamps on the edges of the coast here. Um, you think that you are crossing the border into what is the whole marsh is proper. Um, which means you're not too far away from this promontory that you're looking for. Um, in fact, in the distance, with the occasional lightning strikes around you, you actually see this large rocky hill that juts out into the sea um, ahead of you. You also notice, as you get a bit closer, that this path seems to diverge. One length of the path seems to head further inland and another path heads up to this promontory um, into what looks like a clump of bushes and things on the rock side but as you are coming closer and you see this you know with the rain and everything there's just sheets of water cascading down um, you know basically it's basically like a cliff face um, you do notice something else you notice that there is a fairly wide, fairly high sea cave ahead of you. Um, 
by your estimate, you'd say uh, probably around 20 foot wide, um, but it only seems to be about 15 feet, you know, between the top of the, the rock, um, or should I say the bottom of the rock and the, the top of the sea. So you could maybe get your ship in there, but you'd have to take down the mast. Luckily it is a step down mast, so you can do that. Um, how far away is the the stair or the the pathways we saw from the cave itself? Um, from the cave itself, I'd say it's probably around. Let me get. Sorry, I just want to see if I've got the other map here. Do, 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 do. Wrong side. Paging forward instead of backwards. Um, having a look at it. Oh, awesome. They don't actually have a legend on this map to give you any indication of oh, the so get 10 minutes walk. Um, I'm going to say, from where you are, where this, where this sea cave sort of dips into this hill, um, it's maybe about 100, 150 feet away. Okay. Um, and does it look like there's any safe safe ways to like land the boat on the shore or is it rocky or um it is fairly rocky around here there are a couple of spots where you can actually see a clearer beach but in this weather it's it's going to take a bit of skill getting there hmm. you're gonna to have to thread the needle okay um so what do you think siren should we tell them or should we just go for it? We are the captains, after all. <laughs> Guys, look, a cave. Oh, just, just to annoy the <laughs> captain here. What did you say about captain? What? Cave. No, nothing. There's a cave ahead. What do? What yeah. do? Well, is it... Is this, is this roughly where we need to be? Or do we need yeah, to go from, further down from, the coast? From the map, um, you know that this is more or less where you need to be. Okay. Well, then let's head for the cave. We can maybe use the oars on the other side to go in slowly and push against the rocks to make sure we don't whack anything. How far are we from the cave? 150 feet or something. Yeah, I'm just at, at a bit the, close you're to a little bit closer to the cave itself now. Um, uh, closer to right between in. 50 and 100 feet away. So yeah, you could anchor off. Uh, the water isn't too too deep here, so it's up to you. Don't we have a rowboat? <coughs> Not on this kind of boat. No. This basically is a rowboat. <laughs> yeah. Oh. A big ass one, but it's a rowboat. Well, I'll let the aquatic people decide. <laughs> Um, I, I'm down with whatever you guys are doing, because I'm just going to yeah. fly to shore. I'm not getting wet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's well, uh, let's take the sails down then. Yeah, let's moor as close as we can. Okay, so it doesn't take too long for you to do that. Um, are you actually guiding the ship then in with the oars into the sea cave itself? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's gonna because then it'll keep it safe from the storm as well. All right. So as you do so. Um, a couple of things uh, oh, you, know, you take notice of um, as you as the you know you knock down the the, the mast and that so you tuck away the sails you've got everything you know down the center of the ship and you start rowing yourself slowly 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 in the sounds of the storm you can actually see that this the, the way this cave um, enters this promontory is it's, it's actually it makes it as quite a safe harbor um, the water is calm here. The storm isn't affecting it as much. It does seem to be um, low tide at the moment. So you think that if it was high tide, most of this cave entrance would be blocked off by the water. It would be made more difficult to spot from the ocean, basically, or from the Azure Sea. But you've come at an opportune time. But now, if we leave the ship here, mm. will the ship be in danger at high tide, or will it be fine inside the cave? Let me give you some more information. So, as you start rowing a little bit deeper into this cave mouth, 
you see that the ceiling does seem to rise a little bit again um, and it it does um, even out if I can put it that way the ceiling itself um, and you see there's another little smaller um, cave that's maybe about 15 feet across or not cave but you know like a like a hollow if you will um, you think that it will be a tight squeeze to get the ship through there but you would be able to leave the ship yeah as long as it's anchored so that you know it's far enough away from the walls it's not going to it won't be buffeted around you think it'll be pretty safe in here okay yeah rather um, safe than sorry is my vote yeah yes um but so, so um would uh, would i know like when the next high tide is i know don't i i've got a naval almanac and i've got a whole bunch of you do yeah. you mm -hmm. think that it is most likely some some time off um, you'll, uh, have, you'll be able to keep track of it enough that it's, it's not going to be a problem for you. If, if you do need to get back to the ship, it's easy. You do have somebody that can fly after all. Hmm. So don't, don't fret about it, is what I'm trying to say. Oh, I don't okay. know a whole lot about the tides. I'm just giving you a little bit of flavor. So I'm not okay. going to overcomplicate my life by trying to keep track of. <laughs> oh, it's in it's in the next three hours. <laughs> you know, whatever. No, uh -uh. it's far away. <laughs> it's the it's next only six day. hours cycle. If you know, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. I am not a I am not a, a mariner of any way, shape, or form. Um, but yeah, what you can also see now that you're in this sheltered little inlet, if you will. Um, of the sea cave um, around you the storm you can still hear it but it is it has tapered off significantly now I just want to do a sound change quickly um, what the heck was that? <laughs> that it was me I was say that was <laughs> not me um, <laughs> Sorry, just give me a two seconds. I'm not finding the thing that I'm I'm looking for. I'm stabbing the first lizard I see, just so you guys know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Not not fire blasting. Or... What is I'm unusual? Sorry. As you look through to you know the, through this other little cave entrance that goes seems to lead deeper into this promontory you do see what mm -hmm. appears to be a shimmer of light on the water very faint <clears throat> mm. um, and it it seems to flicker um how far are we from it doesn't someone still have this with spyglass um, at this point in time, you're within, say, 30, 40 feet of this. I, I do, so I could potentially use one. Mm, good idea. Well, do you want to borrow it? Because I probably didn't notice it. Wait, didn't we all notice it? Notice what? Yeah, Did no, we all notice it? You would have all seen it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, it's, well, it's pretty it dark, um, because you, have, you guys have arrived at night. Um, but you also see that... Um, you can, you, I mean, you can all, see, well, most of you can see in the dark, but even the humans can see this light flickering on the water through this other entrance. You say the humans like there's more of, more than one. Or the human, <laughs> sorry. Well, I, the uh, human and I think Beiru also doesn't have um, dark vision. Cyan uh, um, points towards it and then says, First mate, spy it with your spyglass. So I'll... I'll... I've, I've got one, right? So I'll have a look. All right. He's insinuating you are the first I'm going to share something with you that you can have a look at. But, but, I'm, but I'm the first mate and the dwarf's the captain. You're confused by it. I <laughs> mean, so. I'm missing. Okay. I'm so tired. Sorry. I'm the quartermaster. Everyone's sleeping outside. I'm sleeping inside. <laughs> As quartermaster, you can go sleep back on the boat. No, no. 
No, no, no. I'm the quartermaster. <gasps> Minimize his back. Sorry. Okay. What's going on now? Does anybody see anything on the map? Yeah, I've uh, been just a little. Too much now. Yeah. I don't know what I'm allowed. Three to of see. us in a tunnel of sorts. I, I see four. Four I of us. I see three of us. Hmm. What's strange is on the C4. on the stream one, it's just a grey screen. Can maybe zoom in. Uh, it's not showing no. up at all. I'm going to just do this and tell it to sync the view. Maybe that will do the trick. <coughs> Apparently not. <coughs> This is bizarre. I don't know if it's because the player map or this player one doesn't actually have a character that it can click on to see. Maybe. Probably. Open combat tracker. Click on character. I did. Might work. It is not, unfortunately. Uh. Wrong. I need to see what else here is. Sorry, folks, we're having a small technical difficulty here. I will sort it out momentarily. Even if I have to just create a freaking character quickly. <laughs> just randomly add it to the combat tracker. Just call it the Watcher. Yeah, Observer. Great. I need to swap back to this one so that I can actually add it. <clears throat> All right, let's see if that works. This is the weirdest thing. View, inclined view again. It just persists on showing a grey map. Maybe it's because I've got a different map open. Um, I'm just going to tell it to stop sharing and to reshare. Same thing for me. You also just seeing grey. No, no, no. I see Carcarius, myself, and Bums in a line, and then in front of us, there's. Um, line. Yeah, the map has been uh, whatever. It's viewable. I think I just sorted it out. Yay! I've sorted it out. Great. Okay, so there's an invisible dude just tagging along next to you guys. <laughs> yeah, the reason why you can't see is because there is actually a divider there. So I, what I'll do is I will move you guys forward. It's the line of sight boundaries, basically. Yeah. Why do I feel like I'm being watched? <laughs> um, as Ooh. you came Sounds a little bit in closer in into this um, area, you can actually see that... This is an extremely large water-filled cave. It seems to be roughly circular, and it is about 70 feet in diameter. Um, you see, obviously, it connects to the sea behind you. Um, with that 15-foot wide passage. Um, but the roof of that smaller entrance is only about 5 feet above the water. So it's a little bit tricky. Sorry, Xerxes, you would not be able to fly into here. Um... The main cave, however, has a high roof that extends around 25 feet above the water level. Um, you also see most of the cave appears to be natural, except for a rough ledge that has been cut into the rock long running along the southern edge, um, connecting with the adjacent cave. Um, at the western edge of the ledge, um, you cannot see anything as yet. But you can also see 
oh no you can actually see this um basically this thing over here um is a like a ramp that's been cut um, out of the rock um of you know basically very crude looking rough steps um that lead up from the water uh, the water in here is also very clear you do ha um, notice some tall seaweed um, its fronds swaying lazily um, that covers the bottom of this entire, entire pool excuse me um, and I would like you guys to give me some perception rolls please our boat is fine right yeah, like drinkers are up and it's secured and it's secure. Okay. Uh, how deep is the water what are we walking how deep is this water over here uh, yes. i'm trying to find the note for it doesn't actually make mention of it here. I think it makes mention of it somewhere else. Give me a second. <coughs> Sorry, folks. Unfortunately, I do not have all of this stuff memorized. It is simply impossible for me to do so. General features. <coughs> Please excuse my brother Neville. He's still getting over some pleurisy. Uh, sorry, Peter, I have no freaking idea. I'm going to say it's probably about 10 or 15 feet. If I find it somewhere else, I'll let you know. So we're swimming at the moment. Yeah. It's not super duper deep, but it's it's deep enough. Should have put my other arm on. But yeah, you can see that lining that stone... Um, edge or that ledge um, there are torch brackets that have torches in them and that is the light that you saw glittering off of the water they're not burning super duper bright um, but there's enough light to to make your way um, hmm. siren cyan and booms as well as carcarius you guys all notice shapes um, that seem to be attempting to hide in the seaweed. Oh. Ah, shit. Large shapes? Small shapes? Large. They look humanoid. Um, in fact, you notice as one of them moves away, deeper into the cave, away from you, um, while... Another one, um, well, the other, yeah, two move away and two are just staying there, and they just seem to be watching you. They're, they're looking at us. Yeah. Um, I put my hand up in there and I wave silently. Okay, they're under the water, so. Uh. But since you've waved, um, you see that these two heads pop up out of the water. They are unmistakably um, lizard folk. The same kind of lizard folk that you met before on the sea ghost. Um, and they start swimming towards this set of stairs. And they stand there looking down at you. And they've got their weapons, basically. They've got spears. Um... And they're pointing them down at you, and they're making motions for you to come up out of the water, but to do so slowly. Um, and one of them actually says something. Who understands Draconic? Me and Bims. You and Bims. Um, basically, what they're saying is uh, soft skins and struders uh, come out of the water. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll reply. Um, we mean you no harm. Uh, we've made acquaintances with uh, some of your kind uh, not too long ago. Um, 
I believe they would have brought you some weapons. And the two look at each other for a second, um, and hear the one say to the other, Quickly, go fetch the scale shield. Not there we have How are you guys doing? He says, Hearing Zerkis talk like this, I'm just gonna like, out of the corner of my mouth, like, are we okay or what's happening? I'll, I'll just tell, I'll tell Bums, uh, relay information to everyone. Um, oh, about what the conversation no. is. Sure. Okay, so Bims is busy enlightening all of you as, what, as to what this lizard ah, man is yeah. saying. Um, and this lizard man that's now standing by himself, um, he says, You are known to us. Come out of the water and throw down your weapons. We will take you to see the queen. Mm. And you can hear coming from this passage um, from the south, you can hear many more footsteps. Hmm, well, do we have a choice, guys? Um, yeah, I don't think we have much option here. Yeah. So we come in peace. Um, you, would, uh, you would know um, from my interactions with... Uh, I have no idea what their names are, but we, you would know from my interactions with uh, the, the lizard folk that brought the weapons here uh, that we mean you no harm. They say your intentions I will leave to the queen. We do not have much truck with the soft skins. The oh, why queen is and that? her advisor will take care of you. Have you had run-ins with the soft skins as you call them before? We have. The seafaring kind or He from doesn't which? seem like he he he's sort of talking to you but in the interest of buying time, he's going to continue with the conversation. He says, hunters, trappers, those who come into the marsh. Okay. <clears throat> I'm so not, our, not, not where we're from then, because we didn't even know. Well, most of us didn't know that you guys were uh, had settled here. So it couldn't be anyone from where we're from, at least. So take uh, solace in that. What were you going to say, Peter? I'm gonna get it out of the water before something eats me. All right. <laughs> so, so I think we we kind of have to move forward and just kind of do it, do what they yeah. say. Uh, I'll get I'll out the water. The question like, with you know, with the depth of this water <clears throat> is Corolla sort of just like trading with just his head above it. No, it's all swimming. It's ten feet deep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're all swimming. You you can you can make it even very better. easily. Um, I don't know if I should perhaps show you guys just as a little reminder about what these guys look like. I mean, most of them are are big and bulky. And they are not, they are not small fellows, not in the slightest. Um, you also see that most of them have like this mane of 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 um, what would you call it, webbing, I suppose. Um, and around their eyes and their heads, um, to various degrees, you see that this one has got a different coloration and pattern um, to that blue tinge in the scales, um, and the yellow and the oranges um, are not very deep, they're more bright. So from that, you, you take it that he's probably you know, fairly young. Oh. Maybe it is put that hmm. there for the stream so that everybody has an idea of what these lizard folk look like. Um, doesn't take long, a couple of minutes later, you see a large troop of these lizard folk move in to basically line this ledge, um, and one of them that steps forward, um, I'd like you guys to make me, what would this be? Make me insight checks, please. Holy shit. <laughs> Corrodus for the win. 
Damn. Was so close to rolling a 20 on that. <laughs> First time in ages. Nice. <laughs> Helen. <laughs> so much for your good rolls tonight. <laughs> but uh, yeah. never have good rolls. The three C's. You know, constipation, clarity, I don't know what. Uh, <laughs> cyan, calcareous, and corollas. Um, you have something tugging at your memory. You believe that this particular lizard folk that has now stepped ahead of everybody else, um, he's much larger than the others. He's also wearing what appears to be like a ornamental breastplate. Um, you know, <laughs> made out of made out of tough hides and leathers and things, but you can actually see it has been you know, like studded with pieces of gold and silver as well. Um, and he starts speaking in the common tongue, and he says to those around him, which include a couple of other guys who are similarly, you know, armed and armored. Um, you know, the others are more. Are more they they're not dressed. <laughs> they they they've got simpler, um, you know, like leather braces and things like that, and feathers and necklaces and things. Enough for variation. Um, but these these others you can clearly see are more like like captains of sorts. They are bigger. They are meaner. They are better equipped. But this guy that steps in f forward, he starts speaking in common. Um, and it sounds a bit strange, this almost sibilant hiss as well because of the lizard folk. And I mean, they've got these pointy, pointy teeth, long jaws and tongues. Um, but it's good enough that you can make out what he says. And he says, these soft skins are known to us. What brings you to our lair? Oh, uh, hey, long time no see. Is it, is it the same one that... Uh... One of the same ones that we had uh, met on the boat previously. Yes. Okay, or ship. Um, I would say, hey, long time. Uh, <clears throat> we were hoping we could potentially uh, make a trade agreement with you. Trade? Oh, that was you, you were procuring weapons previously. Um, and we wanted to find out if potentially you, you needed more. He says... This is something for you to discuss with the queen. Lay down your weapons. Hand them... Hand them over. Oh, God. Tell him, tell well, him, tell him! Tell well, him these are the weapons back. for trade. We cannot allow you... to come armed before the queen. I will wait here. <laughs> I'm playing... I think Keep then over my quarter staff. Yeah, if if Barry's gonna wait then I'll leave my weapon my um trident and sword with Barry. Yeah, hundred percent. Uh, okay. Um I'd like, can I can I um we've got our bags on us, right? What if are they gonna search our bags? No. They they basically just want the apparent weapons that you've got, you know. Scabbers on our and hips and so okay. on and so forth. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, I mean, your, your weapons you won't have in your bag. It would be, you know, if you've got spare weaponry, it would be mm. attached to the outside of your bag, not inside of your, your back. <laughs> okay. So, anything like that, they're also going to insist that you leave behind. Okay, fair enough. Um, things like daggers and that, they're not going to make a big issue out of. Yeah, it remind me to make a, a coat out of this bear rug. <laughs> so, and sealed dagger pockets. And and the quarterstaff? Do they even care? Uh, this Cyan. is just my walking stick. Yeah. You would have surprised exactly what a dagger can do. Cyan <laughs> <laughs> um, shivers. So, who will. Oh. So, Beiru, you're staying behind. Is anybody else staying behind with Beiru? Preferably oh, not. After everybody stuff. Oh, you're gonna be lonely, big guy. Don't worry, I'll stay with you. I'll keep you company. That's probably a good idea. Yeah. You stay. <laughs> and one eyebrow will definitely go up. <laughs> Do you know how to play cards? Oh gosh. No. Okay. No, that's fine. Neither do I. <laughs> <laughs> 
good luck. Good luck, big guy. Just fun. Bye. Um, sorry, give me two seconds. I just need to organize something here. Because, of course, Gordon will never find exactly what he's looking for when he actually needs a day. Well, it's Wednesday, of course not. <laughs> and what would be in the fun in that? All right, so you should have the second map by now. So you led through a series of passages that takes you past uh, several um, rooms, uh, most of which have doors, uh, crude doors, um, wooden doors, um, but you don't see any like locks or anything on them. Um, as you go down this one particularly long passage, um, you eventually come to a set of much more ornate looking doors that um, appear to be stone um, that are currently open and all through these passages it is brightly lit um, and on your walk you actually see um, what's happened basically is there's about 20 of these guards around you three of them have <coughs> stayed with Beiru the rest are escorting you through um, these passages um, basically flanking you Making sure you're not going anywhere. You know they're blocking off the the passages that branch off of this this key one, so that you're basically being herded to a very specific place. And but you still notice a few things. Sorry, say again, Richard. No, I was gonna say like I'd be just glancing down whatever passages in that yeah. we pass. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. There's a lot of them that is blocked off by doors. So you're not going to have a you know a view into a lot of places. Uh, yeah. One thing that you do notice, um, one of the passages that breaks off to the right, um, they don't actually make a great effort to to block this one off um, from your from your view. But what you see when you glance past, it seems to be um, a barracks of sorts. You see very regimented bedding lying on the ground. You see crude other crude furniture and things um some food stores laid about but organized in a bit more of a more civilized manner if i can put it way you'd think you you know your experience with lizard folk is they generally considered to be quite bestial they're not a, a considered a civilized race and yet here you can see the stone passages that are about 10 feet wide and about um 10 to 12 feet high are actually while they still, while still comparatively comparatively rough, they have been worked to some extent. It's not you know, dwarven craftsmanship, but it's certainly not crude. No, they can, these can, aren't just crude caves that they've just you know found a home in. They've actually made an effort to you know, build something. Okay. Um, uh, I want, wanted to ask if I can check if they made a place like this, or was it? They found it, and it's someone else's previous home. Um, oh, sorry, something weird is happening here. I've got an archaeologist background, so I should be able to know that. Oh, I wanted to use my stone cunning, because I'm a <laughs> Okay, sorry, what did you want to know exactly? If if they made these tunnels the way they are, the rooms, or did they found it and improved upon it? Yeah, you don't even need to roll for that. Yeah, you, you no. from what you can tell, it would appear, it would appear that this is something that they have done, perhaps oh, okay. over generations even. Um, so you are led Sorry. into this through these huge double doors. Um, each door is like ten feet wide. Um, and the room that you find yourself in, I'm going to drag you guys who are there so that you can see it. This will be on the new map that I shared to you guys. Um, I don't see anything on the new map. Oh. Yeah, it's really... Oh, you're yeah. not there yet. Uh, My uh, new map disappeared. Can I uh, exit the old one? Uh, don't exit it. Save it somewhere, because you might need it. Okay. Alright. Um, and... Yeah, so in this room... Wait, I'm missing somebody. It's not me. Me. My, my map disappeared. Your map disappeared? Mm, I didn't close it, it just... 
this bit. And and Bimsy. Okay, I'm gonna leave Bim Bims by Bayrou for now. <laughs> we can say he's there. Absolutely. I just don't want to drag too many tokens around. <laughs> Your DM is lazy tonight. Um, but you see these, there's, there's two sets of three pal pillars flanking a central area where two lizard folk hatchling are currently playing. At the far end of the room you see a wooden throne that stands on a low stone dais. I know some people say dais? 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 Dias. Dias? I don't know, it's D-A-I-S, so to me it's dais, or whatever. Carvings of reptiles decorate the throne, and you see glints of reflected light that hint at the presence of inset gemstones. You also see the heads of several creatures that hang um, on the walls uh, that appear to be mounted on plaques of wood for display as trophies. Um, the guards basically filter in around you and close the doors behind you. On that throne, you see a slightly more diminutive um, lizard folk that's wearing a large headdress that's also studded with some gemstones and is worked with gold, etc. Um, and she is reclining on this throne and busy having a conversation with a much older looking um i want to say gentlemen but lizard folk um who also seems to have some large amulet hanging uh, from his you know, very stooped posture you can see it swinging as he's he's gesturing um towards the doors um you can also see more of these larger lizard folk males um the heavily armored ones standing not too far away from the throne and to the other side you see how would you describe them these lizard folk are carrying staves that have like bird skulls and things on them um and like strings of teeth hanging from them you can also see they're wearing you know crude um, necklaces and things they've got also braces at etc um no sh they of course not wearing shoes or clothing as such but they also have um like belts with pouches and things hanging off of them uh, but they don't look they're much smaller they're not as muscular they, they don't look like soldiers it's about a bunch of getting at. Like a witch they look sort of casters. Yeah, kind they of. Seem like um, yeah. If you'd like, give me... Give me some history roles, if you're proficient in history, if anybody's proficient. History. 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 I'm only half, sorry. <laughs> I know all about these people. <laughs> Um, by your best guess, Xerxes, you would think that these are some sort of holy men, holy men, so to speak, holy lizards, um, priests or shamans, something of that sort. From their, um, you know, their very stylized <laughs> outfits. Um, as you are led a little bit further into about not not too close to the throne so it's you're about 20 feet away from the throne um the big guy that led you here uh that spoke to you in common um basically smashes his fist against his chest and says my queen we have brought you guests and the two kids that were busy playing there just in front of the throne basically run away and hide behind the throne. Aww. <laughs> um, the queen, as you now um, recognize her to be, um, stands up, and you see she's also got like like very thin silk in that. Um, Accenting, accenting her garb um, and her wrists and fingers are covered in uh, rings and things as well and bracelets that jingle as she stands up and she says in pretty fluent common 
you are welcome here, strangers. But why would you come to this place? Saying good morrow. What what beautiful craftsmanship you have within your tunnels. Such a lovely home. Um, we've uh, we've been sent as messengers just to come and reach out to you and your people. She says you have been sent as messages. Messengers. Messengers. She says, Sauriv, do you know anything about this? And she looks to the old lizard folk that was standing next to the throne, who sort of uh, shuffles forward. You can see as he's moving, he seems to have arthritis or something. He's, he's struggling to walk. And as he comes towards you, um, you notice that his eyes are milky. He's quite blind. But uh, he's leaning on the staff and this chain this is busy jangling there. And he takes in a deep breath. And he says, I have had no business with these, my queen. She nods and she says uh, to you, You come to us to speak but you must forgive my people we have not had a good history with your kind and you can see the guys off to the to the right hand side of the throne um, those shamans those priests and um, they are chattering softly um, in Draconic. Okay. Xerxes, if you'd like, make a perception roll. Okay. Um, let me do that. Just to see if you can hear it or not. Um, okay. You can't... They... they, they talking too quietly for you to to understand what they're saying but you can yeah. you can tell from their general disposition that they don't like you here the warriors in this room um that are flanking you and even those bigger guys towards the throne on the left hand side of the throne um they are looking at you and you can see they they have their hands on their weapons and that but they're not threatening in any way um okay. The, from what you guys can tell, the, the queen is firmly in control here. This okay. Is her domain. Um, and she says, We have trouble with your names, but I will try to remember them. Please, introduce yourselves. Uh, sure, I'll go around the group and I'll introduce everyone by name. I'll say, and um, I'll say, and yourself. And she says, my name is Queen, something or the other that I cannot find for some stupid <laughs> Just oh, as a sorry. note, Arthur Kent. When, when I get introduced, I'm just going to, for ease, I'm just going to say, call me Car. It may just be better for her to, instead of remembering my full name. Um, the, so I don't know if you caught her name. Um, can you put it into the chat, please, so I can I write it down? I certainly do that for you. This is... Whoa. That is far to read. <laughs> <laughs> O-T-H-O-K-E-N-T. Yeah, I stood up. Downfall of using a couch, eh? <laughs> it is. It is. Um... Brings new, new definition to couch co-op. Couch co-op D&D. &D. Um, uh, I've got more to say if, if I need to. <laughs> well, the old the older guy, who's now in, a little bit closer to you guys as well. Um, you see, you hear when he speaks, he doesn't speak with any kind of accent or anything. His common is actually very good. You'd, if you closed your eyes, you would think you were talking to a standard Kierlander. No, a human speaking common. Um, you don't hear any of the sibilant hiss 
ominous um, speech or any of the strange inflections um, that they tend to, you know, you know, as somebody who's not a native speaker would make. Um, yeah. And he says, I am Minister Sorov. He says, your kind, I thank you for your names. Um, but most of our folk, only these handful here, and he, he, he gestures towards the shamans and towards the uh, you know, head warriors, basically. He says, only the shamans and the, the sub-chiefs um, truly have a grasp of your language. Um, our people do not. We, we, we usually converse in draconic. So okay. your names mean nothing to us. Not, not, not as an insult, you understand. But our names are things like what? What is the word? And you see, he's he he, he like starts using one of his like blunted claws to tap his quarter staff, and um, he says, "Our names are our actions, or our our names for things." So he points to one of the warriors standing nearby, um, and he says, "For example, this one, and the the one that he's pointing at. You can see he's got like a whole bunch of like scars and things around him. He's big. He's muscular. He's a, he looks like a mean motherfucker." Um, and he says. Even though I cannot see him, I can smell him. And I know this one is Korth. And Xerxes, you who speak Draconic, recognize the word Korth means danger. He points to another one. This one's um, coloring is a very deep green. And he says, that one over there is Akuak which means green in the common tongue. So you see, your names do not have meaning in Draconic. Uh -huh. So our people will not understand them. But, but my name is an action. Siren? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How is it an action? Well, it's a sound. <laughs> It's just a, it's, we know the lore. <laughs> I suppose. Um, but he says... My queen, I think that we should listen to what these soft skins have to say. And immediately, one of the more elaborately dressed shaman in the back steps forward and says, Why should we listen to these interlopers? They mean nothing to us. Kill them and be done with them. And the queen, like, just, like, turns her head to look at this guy and says, You will be silent until I speak to you. And immediately, like, all the warriors in the room, they, they you can sort of see their hackles are raised. And they, they all very subtly turn towards the shaman. And the shaman in question bows very low and makes a motion with his hand and says, my apologies, queen. And just like recedes back into his group um, of fellows. Queen Arthur so, Kent. Mm, yes. No, that's right. That yeah, yeah. So she, she basically walks back to her throne um, and she makes a, a, a motion with her claw and she says in draconic fetch them chairs and several of the guards leave and then come back carrying just basically three-legged stools wooden stools um, which they place in like a semicircle in front of the throne about 15 feet away and she says please have a seat oh, thank you that's very kind of you i'll move up and take a seat uh, as I'm sitting down, I'll sort of say, um, yeah, what am I saying? Uh, 
out of character, we probably should have discussed <laughs> what what story we're going to tell her. Uh, a bit later. Like, I'm just going to... Yeah. Um, uh, I'm sorry to hear that you've had uh, such bad run-ins with our kind before. Um, but I can assure you uh, there they would not have been from where we're from. Um, our village did not even know that... Um, you existed uh, until we had helped some of your kind earlier, a um, couple of weeks ago, I would imagine, um, with some weaponry. She says, uh, and this is this is now her looking um, at you, but she glances off to the guy who brought you in, the guy that you recognize from the ship, and she says, you are no one to us. That restricts told us of your meeting and that you allowed him to leave with the agreed upon iron you say you come from a village that does not threaten us what village is this so i'll go ahead and say uh so say bill <laughs> <laughs> okay so we're going that route <laughs> Uh, make a deception check for me. No, well, we are from Bill, are we not? I've got a whole house there. <laughs> <laughs> no, you got it from you got in salt marsh. But yeah, we're we're not here on behalf of Bill. That's the main thing. Yeah. So, um, do you, are you just getting confused, or um, are you genuinely trying to say that you're from Bill and not salt marsh? Well, I guess we're, we're I guess we sort of say we're we're travelers. We've been through Bill and we've been through Salt Marsh. Um, so she uh, says, uh, "What?" <laughs> she says, "We know of this Burl," and she looks to sort of, and uh, that's now you know, also got a stool and is just sitting um, on the ground. No, in front of the dais, basically. And um, he says, My queen, Burl, is the fortified, soft-skinned town to the north, near, near the Alf Forest. Uh, she says, Ah, yes, yes. I thought they might be from the, from the sea town nearby. Some of us are. Uh, is is that... Sea town, um, a town that you have qualms with. She says, "Not at all. No, we face a more deadly foe. Yeah. Perhaps they might be foes of ours too." She says. She she, she ponders for a second, and she says um, to Saruf, "The word is Sahagan. Yes." And he confirms, and she says, "Our true enemies are the Sahag." Uh, we uh, would would we recognize the name having fought them? Because I don't think any of us actually knew what creatures they were. It's true. Um, you, I think, did make a check, and you did recognize them. And that's why I decided to they look like, and yeah. they could describe but, them. Yeah. Well, just yeah, with her mentioning that, I'll say I, th I believe we. We ran across them on the way down here. They attacked our ship. Dastardly are they, are they the the water dwelling folk? Um, she says, indeed, the yeah. the worshippers of Sekalua, the yeah. shark men, if you will. They are the enemy of any sentient races. Then we do have near the sea. Then we do have a common enemy. So is that why you needed the weaponry? Is to fight these Sahagin. 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 Um she says we sought the weapons of iron to better protect ourselves from their attacks, yes. They have raided us several times over the last year, taking many of my people 
as slaves and killing others. Hmm. We are attempting something here. I believe the word in your tongue is alliance. We are attempting an alliance with who? And she nods to Sorov, and Sorov says, Oh, s several folk, as a matter of fact. We were hesitant to, to reach out and speak to um, the people from, from Saltmarsh, but we have several emissaries here in the lair at the moment um, from the merfolk, I think you, you know them as merfolk. Yes, I'm familiar with them. Uh, we also have some of the Lokata here. As well as the less savory, but certainly more um, violent in temperament, Coalent. I don't know if these races are familiar to you these peoples uh, for me I, I know of the merfolk but the others are not too well known to me yeah, I've, I haven't um, had a run in with them myself would anybody uh, like to roll uh, me um, I, forget, I forget now would Orcus have counted as a merfolk no. or is he a different race Orcus is a sea elf Okay. Come to think of it, Orcus is still bedding down in Salt Mars. Yeah, yeah Orcus you... is dead. Yeah. Oh yeah, we haven't taken him home yet, have we? <laughs> um, but basically, the Lokata um, are a fish-like people, and I will show you an image of what they look like, just because I think they're very cute. Oh, awesome! Um, yeah, it's a sea dog. Oh, cool. <laughs> Uh, they have also be long been um, prey for the Sahagan and others along uh, along this coast. So we sought their aid in what we think will be a major offensive in the future. This is the old man talking to you now. Yeah. He says the Coalins are somewhat different they are also an aquatic people but they are closer to goblin kind in many ways i do not know if you are familiar with them more like um and you, you see he ponders again tapping tapping that blunt claw against the the, the stuff he says like hobgoblins that's that's the ones the, the big ones uh. <laughs> Not the little green runts. So I'm, I'm not uh, accustomed with them, no. Uh, but by, by the sound of these, they sound... Oh wait, I just realized something. Sorry, just Richard, were you talking about Orcus or Oceanus? Orcus. Orcus was a triton. <laughs> yes, sorry. Yeah. I got, so I got did, them conflated. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so are tritons merfolk or... The, is that slightly different? Tritons are not mo merfolk. Tritons, okay. you know, um, from your conversations with the Triton that was your friend, uh, Tritons are actually inhabitants of the plain of elemental water. Um, his particular oh. tribe um, had found a home here after... Oh, yeah, so they came from a different plane. I remember that now. Right. So they um, they basically just guests in this world, if you'd like to put it that way. Okay. Um, so he says, do you think that your people would be amenable to such an alliance? Would they stand well, in common cause with us against the Sahagan? Uh, can you give us an indication, before I answer, sorry, can you give us an indication of how big their forces are? We do not know. This See, our people would, 
Oh, sorry, our people would likely be willing to assist if you were to send an emissary with us to go and consult, but we cannot breathe underwater like you can. And you see both Saurav and um, the Queen are, are nodding their agreement at this, you know, you're speaking sense. Um, the shamans at, at this point, you can actually see most of them have filed out of the room. Um, you know, you've they're not doing it quietly. You notice them doing this. Uh, only the one that had stepped forward previously is still hanging around, you know, by this pillar over here, just watching you guys like a hawk. And um, Queen Arthur Kent says, We will certainly consider this. But how do we know that you would prove valuable allies? How would we know you would be friends? You, we have said it before, our kind has not had much um, love for one another. As in human, human folk or the other, the other land walking races and yeah. the lizard folk. Um, uh, out of character now, the task the council asked us to investigate if these lizard folk are a threat to salt marsh, eh? Yes, that's it. Yeah, okay. So, okay, that's so we effectively that. are emissaries for the moment. Yes. So I'll chime in and I'll, I'll sort of go, um, if you've had run-ins with our kind before, I do not believe they're from the towns that we frequent. Um, as I had mentioned previously, uh, most of the elders where we come from were not even aware of um, your being here or living here on this cove. Um, so if you've had run-ins with our kind in the past, they're likely um, from a different village. So although I cannot speak... Um, specifically for our town, it would appear that we would not be enemies. We aren't enemies with you. I, I think what, friend, uh, the main thing that would determine if the folk in Saltmarsh would aid is if these Sawagan are an issue for them as well. Yeah. I don't believe that they would help you if there's no threat to them from these creatures but it is something that I think they'd be open to discussing however we might be well not might we are more than likely willing to assist you but as I mentioned earlier uh, we cannot swim underwater so fighting them is going to be quite difficult for us Um, at this, the, the shaman in the corner steps forward again, um, and he kind of clears his throat, and he says, My queen, if I might offer a suggestion. And uh, she basically makes a motion for him to, to step forward and address you. Um, and he says, if you were to prove, or actually he's not addressing you, he's addressing it to, he's talking to the queen. You, you guys are below him, beneath him. He's not addressing you directly. He says, my queen, let them prove themselves. If their intentions are, as they say, honorable, let them prove how capable they are. Let them go into the swamp. Let them kill another of our enemies. Let them prove their worth to our cause. We cannot give like them it. information on our alliance if they are only going to take that information and use it against us. What's to stop them from forming an alliance with a Sahagin and killing us all? He makes a good point. We'd be willing to do that. 
to form an alliance to prove the, our our honesty, trustworthiness. It, it, maybe we should ask what the swamp enemy is first. She says, I believe I know what my chief shaman is referring to. There is an ancient beast in the swamp that oh, hunts no. our kind. We God know it only it. as the devourer. <laughs> oh. Does it have wings and frequent the skies? No. Oh, thank God. <laughs> it has... It has... Sorov now interjects a little bit and he says, um, another one of its name is Thousand Teeth. He says, it, might you have it is a colossal crocodile. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. okay. Lock better than a dragon. I, 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 I don't know about that, but <laughs> how how big are we talking? Um, we're talking about a like a huge sized creature, ten feet long. Okay, I prefer that to the alternative. Obviously. And do they fight? Uh, do you know if these creatures uh, are solitary or the devourer they... is? a solitary creature it consumes anything that comes near its lair even its own kind our shaman think that is why it has grown so large it is what is the word cannibal cannibal cannibalistic that's the one it Your command of our language is still excellent, nonetheless. She says, you have our thanks. So would I you want... do this for us? Would you prove your worthiness as allies by eliminating this threat hmm. to our lair? I'm going to chime in and say, like, uh, we we don't... We're not too sure. We've never dealt with anything like this before. So we'd like to ascertain more information um, before we accept, just in case uh, it is a feat that we wouldn't be able to accomplish um, just due to our own skill skills. Like, for example, if your kind was hunting this creature, how many would you send? The last hunting party that encountered this creature were perhaps six. Six. And did they survive? Most of them survived. Do you see, and she points... Remember the big guy that um, old Saurav pointed out earlier, whose name Course, was yeah. Danger? <laughs> of course, yeah. He is one of the survivors. Okay, and when they were attacked or attacking this beast, um, did they make any noticeable uh, headway against it? She says... Um, let us ask uh, him himself to, to address. And so he's going to speak now in Draconic. Um, and the way that he describes the encounter is basically that um, they were uh, on a hunting... They were a hunting party going through the swamp and looking for basically food to bring back to the lair. Um, and this thing ambushed them. It basically lay very still and hid itself in the water. And when they were passing over a particularly boggy stretch with this deep, deeper water uh, in between, and they needed to get to the other side to continue following their prey, um, this thing had basically just risen up out of the water and just chomped down on one of their brethren. And it just happened so quickly. They attempted to hit the crocodile um but he says that their weaponry um when this happened 
um, and this was many many moons ago he says when they, they try to penetrate this thing scaly hide their weapons were insufficient to the task but he says um, no considering that your weapons are made out of iron um, and uh, I'm trying to think yeah they would have actually seen you guys battling on the ship as well um, the scale shield that brought you into this place that spoke common to you um, uh, he basically says uh, in common that he believes you guys are well equipped enough and you also have command of impressive magics that okay. might stand the better chance against this creature's hide than you know their crude spears you know wooden stone spears back in the day would have okay uh, uh, that makes me a lot more at ease i don't know about you guys yeah i'm happy to assist them in this if it's if it makes them more comfortable with us i would like to ask though um we do like to prepare um would you by any chance have spare uh i don't know what you'd call it uh, i suppose livestock or um bait that we could use to lay a trap for this creature we can use red man she says <laughs> i'm okay with that <laughs> Red, Red Man is still standing there yeah. with you guys, uh, right? Son, uh, you don't you don't need your left arm, do you? What? I was hanging out with Beru. Oh, yeah. well, you were Beru. Oh, yeah. oh, okay, I thought yes. I thought you had tagged along. Sorry. Oh, we can. Get out of here, man. She. Oh, we can <laughs> okay, well then, without him there, yeah, Sign doesn't need his left arm, does he? Um, but she does say we can perhaps offer you a bounty of fish. To take with Perfect. you live fish i think would work best carrying live fish is going to be a mission i think in a net yeah uh, okay, are you, are you going to carry it no you're carrying it i'm just saying you'll be fine <laughs> i don't know how long do it, <laughs> pardon me how long do fish last out of water if probably it, not very long uh, it depends on what fish it is yeah, yeah if I like. it's a fish it can be a week if yeah. it's Wonder breeze there, yeah. It can put a lung. be a while. Well, I should imagine, but what what kind of sea fish would they be able to get fairly easily? Cod, uh, cod, cod eh? yeah, cod, bream, that okay. sort of thing. So uh, they could possibly arrange something, or perhaps put this, something like it in buckets. Maybe that will thing, extend their yeah, like, a little bit. Like thing, chumming the fish a bit may help because then you get the scent of blood. But this thing will eat carrion as well. Yeah, I'm just, I want them to splash around and stuff. Uh, Again, iron can splash around. Tie a rope to he that. Whatever, that's yeah, that's fine. Like, a dairy, a live fish. Um, but yes, um, we would like to set a trap for this creature. And we'd be happy to prove our, uh, uh, that we are not enemies. Um, so... Sort of, um, and you notice now that he actually is, he's carrying a satchel um, that was sort of swung behind him, out of out of sight, behind, on, on by by his back, um, with his. But that was basically resting sort of next to his tail, and he swings it forward, and he starts rifling through it, and you see he, he as he as he's rifling, he's pulling out what appears to be scroll tubes. But he's running a clawed finger along the top of these tubes. And then he puts one down, pulls another one out, pushes it back in. By the fifth one, he pulls it out um, and he grunts in satisfaction. Um, and he says, my queen. And he hands the queen the scroll case. And she opens it and unfolds what looks to be like another one of those crude maps um, and she says yes sort of this is the one um, and she actually 
get climbs down off of the throne and walks over to you and places this map on the floor and you see those two little lizard folk kids um are trailing behind her and she says come on darlings hold this down for mummy and Aww. they they plunk themselves down on the ground and they're holding you know either end of the scroll open so that you can actually you know, get a good view of the of the map and it's quite well lit in here as well so you've got no problem seeing it um and she kneels and she points with her you nose know, one of these long claws four like fingers um she says we are here and you can see it's fairly similar to the map that you had of the area and she says from what we can tell the devourer seems to reside somewhere north of us perhaps five five or ten miles into the marshlands you would need to track deep into the marshes to even consider laying your trap fine would you perchance uh, um, have a scout or something that you could allow us to take with um and that one that, and, uh, that, oh, that oh. scale shield that was basically talking to you um oh. he says i will provide one of my scouts to lead you at least to where we think this devourer has its lair can we someone needs to witness the slaying of the monster yeah, bring back some teeth i want some teeth he says that is yeah. acceptable you can also bring oh, back well. the creature's head to show the queen and to find a place of honor and he points up um and you can actually see now that you're in the room and you can see more more of the, the the decorations uh those heads that are lining the walls you see like a giant crayfish you see a carrion crawler you see like a, a gigantic hippo's head you also see the heads of a hobgoblin and a sahagan um brown bear a lion a shark head a giant frog um and another different kind of shark and it's basically like a uh, what would it be like a hammerhead yeah. versus a uh, great white or <laughs> whatever but yeah. you know, just like for variation and he says we will mount it and this will be your way of honoring our queen sounds fun so does that sound acceptable to everyone mm. Well, what's yeah. the time now? Because we, we we wouldn't want to do this in the evening. Yeah, this well, is this uh, is all night time. So, I definitely say we need to rest first. I, yeah. I'm I'm weak from casting the spells on the ship. She says, "We will provide you quarters in one of our barracks. You will be watched. We cannot give you free reign just yet in our lair." we but, understand that um we will provide food for you oh yeah um and water and at first light tomorrow our scout will lead you into the marshes to find the devourer and slaughter it sounds good so you basically led right. out of this room say again sorry can we have a 10 minutes or 15 minutes yeah or? i was just looking at the time i did not realize what the time was uh, before <laughs> we do have that uh 10 minute break i just want beiru and cyan i need you to give me a, some perception checks please <laughs> Alright, so that is pretty good. Um, as you are busy standing there, looking around, 
Um, you know, these lizard folk are. They still got their weapons. No doubt no, they're ready. They're not pointing at them at you or anything. Um, but they. If you'd like try and get close to the pile of weapons that your companions you know, dropped on the ground, they basically growl and hiss at you. Um, but as you're looking looking about, taking in your surroundings, you notice that you hear a splashing noise um, to the east of you. And you see, just for a moment, um, a green goblinoid head stick it stick out of the water um, just you know like just above the, the, the edge of that ledge um, and is looking in your direction and it watches you for five minutes or so and then sinks back down into the water oh that was pretty creepy um, hey Beirut, did you see that? Yeah, who that? Uh, I think it was one of these fish people. Mm, but funny color. Uh, yeah, I don't judge. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so it is now 20 to 9. Um, we're going to take a 10 minute break or so. So we'll be back at 10 to 9. I don't know, to what time do you guys want to continue? Um, I'm good to go for a bit tonight. So, should I try to push for half past nine or so? No, minute to midnight. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely not a minute to midnight. Um, great stuff. So, bear with us, chat. We will be back soon. I need to figure out how to do this transitioning stuff again. <laughs> And we are back. Welcome back to whoever is in chat. Sorry, I know I'm trying to like keep 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 an eye on chat to say hello to folks. So I saw Novakin had popped in. Uh, still there? I see. I'm very glad of it. Um, I've just got two monitors and way too much stuff already clogging them up. I think I need to get chat open on it, my tablet or something to really keep an eye on it. So. Uh, to pick up where we left off, you guys had seen something emerge, you, Beiru, and Cyan, and resubmerge itself um, a few minutes later. The rest of you guys in the throne room. The queen basically picks up the, the map again and hands it to you. Uh, who's taking it? Um, sure. Okay, so she hands it to Xerxes. Um, and she walks back to her throne and has a seat. And the two kids are just staying there on the floor looking up at you guys. You can see one is like starting to reach out and is looking like, like, like they want to reach out and touch somebody's boot, basically. Um, who are the four of you that are in there? Carolus, Cacarius, Siren, and Xerxes. I'm going to roll a d4 and see who they try and... Whose shoe they try and accost? Why are you moving? There we go. Um, okay, so they go for car carriers. <laughs> and they're just no. like reaching out towards your boot to touch it because they don't know what this shit is. They've never seen a just boot before. I sort of extend it so they can. But ah. very slowly, I shall extend it. <laughs> are, aren't, they, aren't they adorable? They're just. So I will not kick a child. They are oh. kind of cute. Um, you can see they don't have that same kind of you know fin that sail on their heads. Um, they they basically look like humanoid geckos. <laughs> if I can put it that is way. it? Um, it is light in here. Yeah, it's, it's bright light okay. in here. These okay, torches. Cool. And just yeah. No, I just didn't want to blind them. But as they're running up, I'm just going to reach down and touch my boot and cast. Um, the light cantrip and just make it glow and they both give like these appreciative ah sounds as they see this <laughs> and and the one starts starts like 
pointing at random things. <laughs> I'm dying on the inside. Siren. <laughs> dying of the adorableness. Uh, I'll uh, just touch, I'll touch Corellis's armor and make it glow. <laughs> and believe it or not, playing with these little hatchlings, um, you can see that the queen has a very lizard-like, what you would assume would, would be a smile on a lizard folk face. Um, so she's, you've actually got, gotten, you've gained a couple of, of diplomacy points with her, basically, <laughs> um, yeah, playing with the kids. Say again, sorry? Brownie points. Brownie points, yeah. Um, she says, is there anything else you wish to discuss with us? Otherwise, um, it is late. Um, you are clearly still tired and wounded from something. Yeah, as I mentioned earlier that the Sogan attacked us on no, the on route. Say yeah. She says, um, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> ah, no, really. <laughs> Go and choke over my own spit. Um, she says, if there's nothing else, I will make the arrangements for you to have your fish. We will catch them fresh um, in the morning for you and put them in, into whatever you want. Buckets, nets, your choice. My golf. Do they know the storm is coming? My gone. Um, are you asking this? Yes. Um, Not in character. Yeah, yeah. Um, Do you know the storm is coming? She says, yes, the shamans have warned us. Sorry, I cannot. It just keeps on wanting to, my throat just keeps on wanting to close shut. Sorry, folks, um, on the podcast and that and the stream listening. Um, she says, yeah, we have been warned about the approaching storm. Uh, the shamans have read the fish guts, basically. Um, so they they won't send out any any boats or anything. What they'll try and do is send out their most agile swimmers um, to set up nets um, and try and catch fish, you know, in the nets overnight, basically, um, and check them in the morning. Uh, hopefully, there'll they'll be a good enough catch. Uh, she says there's usually plenty of fishing in the area, so it's not a problem. Um, she says, my guards will escort you to a room. Please do not leave that room until somebody comes to fetch you in the morning. Would one of you like to go with... Um, and she she points to that um, uh, scale shield that had spoken common with you. Um, would, some of you. would one of you like to accompany... Um, the scale shield here to go and fetch your friends so that they may be put at ease. Yeah, I'll go with. Alright. So, I'm not going to beat about the bush too much. Is there anything else you guys want to do while you're in the throne room with the queen? Um, or Beiru and Cyan? Is there anything while you guys are waiting there? Just want to know who that dude is. Unfortunately, I'll ask the guards. The guards just stare at you. They don't understand what you're saying. Hmm. Hmm. Can um can I mime like like swimming <coughs> and pointing at the water? Okay, they'll, they'll say a word in Draconic, uh -huh. but <laughs> whoosh, flies over your head. You don't know what they're saying. I'd like to repeat that word and then keep pointing at the water and make the swimming symbol. <laughs> Good. And they're nodding. Um, can I grab one of their hands and pull them towards the water? Uh, immediately, their spears are at your throat. Um, I say that word again. That's why you stayed here. 
<laughs> and one of them like shrugs at the, his companions um, and he like grabs a hold of the top part of your arm uh, basically around the bicep and he walks you down that ledge towards where you saw um, the head appear and yeah. he calls out and it doesn't take too too long but you see three of these figures start climbing up um, this ramp over here on these stairs uh, they are all heavily armed with strange looking weaponry um, crude but you still see you know they look like they've they've, they've salvaged some blades um, that they somehow managed to to keep wickedly sharp um, I'm trying to get the picture open for you so you can see what they look like but you see that they've got the same sim similar kind of of um, <coughs> armor also made out of shells and leather and stuff their skin is very scaly and he repeats the word and I actually want to check something because I'm not entirely certain <clears throat> okay great um, and this creature sneers at you and the larger the larger of them is carrying a very large bone like spear like you see in the picture and he points it at you and speaks something to the lizard folk and this lizard folk is shaking its head and replies with some something else that you don't understand um this scraggly bearded strange looking uh humanoid then turns to you and do you understand goblin by any chance um no i don't believe so okay but he he mutters a few words in goblin would i know it's goblin uh it certainly is lateral enough that you would recognize it as being goblin but you wouldn't, okay. you wouldn't be able to understand what is being said um yeah. It, after a little while of this and like waiting for your reply, um, it then speaks. I, re I repeat the word that the guy said. And this this thing swaps over to common basically. Um, oh hell yeah! <laughs> uh, very thickly accented common, uh, very crude, and basically says um, their word, our word, colons. Um, okay, is this the same thing that I saw in the water? Like, does it look yes. like the same thing? It does. Um, I say, nice to meet you, and I try to shake his hand. Um, immediately steps back and threatens you with a spear. Um, and you see that other two that were, like, waiting behind him on the stairs, um, yeah. basically flank him and rush forward. Uh, is Beiru nearby? Um, I don't know. Beiru, would you have followed? <sighs> Nope. Uh, <laughs> I, okay, I, I imitate shaking my own hand, and then I smile and nod, and then I put my hand out. He says to you, you lucky, you with oh, lizard what? folk. Otherwise, uh, I would kill you where you stand for your insult. Oh, uh, well, yeah, yeah, well, you're lucky. <laughs> I walk away. <laughs> the lizard replies, says something in Draconic again, and um, these creatures uh, basically like make spitting noises as as mm -hmm. you walk away. And uh, the big one that was in the front says uh, something to the effect of, "Yeah, like, keep on walking, soft skin." And, and uh, say, you hear Austin a chuckle behind him. Hey. Eh? Okay, I hear a chuckle behind them. Uh, behind you, sorry. Behind as, me, as okay. Okay, I, I whisper to myself, Osprim, give me strength. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
then they basically climb back into the water and go about their business. And the lizard folk that escorted you down here walks mm-hmm. back with you. Um, by this point, you see Carcarius um, in the company of these more heavily armed and armored scale shield um, has returned to Bay Room. And take it away, Richard. As, as um, signs walking closer, I'm just going to say in a loud voice, yeah, they've captured us now and they're going to execute us one by one. And I've said sign can go first. Uh, what do I hear this? <laughs> yeah, I said it loud enough so you could. Um, <laughs> I guess Sion would say, oh, oh boy, okay, well, um, um, it's arms! It's uh, fine, <laughs> I'm just messing with you. <laughs> I was going to say, the scale shield next to you, who also understands common, is like, the queen said you are guests, not prisoners. But don't worry, I'm, I'm just making him scared, it's fun. He like stands oh, well. there for a moment contemplating, but he does not really understand. You take <laughs> it that to these creatures' minds, a joke? What's a joke? Is some... <laughs> <laughs> um I said to I said to him, um, you'll you'll get on well with the sea goblin. Sea goblin? Yeah. Weird green sea goblin like Sorry. patrolling the water behind oh, us. Oh it's it's probably what are those things called again? Sea goblin. Yeah, it's probably one of the Coland. Uh, okay. There, there's a couple of other races here. There's like an alliance being formed. Oh, cool. Okay, well. And we're going to go fight a crocodile tomorrow to prove that we're worthy. Oh, uh, okay. How big is this crocodile? Apparently very. Bigger than a giant goat? Yeah. Uh, I, I think it would easily eat a giant goat. Hmm. Okay. Well, now what? Well, now we're going to be escorted to a barracks so we can rest under guard. And then tomorrow morning we are going to go find a crocodile. Okay, nice. b and <laughs> <laughs> Where breakfast is yeah. fish, yeah, <laughs> pretty much only fish. Um, Which uh, I think for sign and me is perfect. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> of the sea. I think that that it's like uh, I'm going to say this. You probably got, you guys probably have like fishing rods and nets and things in your packs as well. It's like this is like standard priestly garb for your kind. <laughs> oh yeah, don't even notice the stench. Um. It's like sweet perfume to you. Um, so you are basically led back through these winding passages and things to a fairly large chamber. Um, there are like simple cots um, on the floor. Um, they, they've, they've got relatively fresh straw um, on them. You also see they have blankets on them. Uh, it's not like like five star hotel accommodation, but you'll be able to rest here. And the good thing is, these are lizards; they don't have fur, so there's no fleas. Uh, <laughs> you hope. <laughs> but there's water lice. Yeah, <laughs> and mites. Yeah, there's probably some sort of bed mites still, but um, um, sort of aquatic so, things. They basically lead, lead you into this chamber. Um, there isn't a door on it, but there are two guards posted at the exit. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And it doesn't take too too long um, for yourselves to you know to un- basically unpack yourself. You you're allowed to keep your weapons. They're giving you you know a little bit of of trust in that regard. Um, and a little while later. A group of female lizard folk um, come in carrying basically like wooden carved uh, trenches uh, that are filled with um, baked fish. Nothing, nothing fancy. Oh, no fairly, for fairly easy. There's some root vegetables and things that they've also baked um, 
along the side. You can see they've even provided a small pot of salt for you to season your food with. Um, and they place these down on the floor and um, very quickly exit the room. And you can see, like, from the doorway, there's more of those little hatchlings that are just, like, peeking in and looking at the strangers. In the when, when the female lizard folk leave, I'm just going to turn to Xerxes. It's like, don't get any ideas just yet. Uh, uh, uh excuse me. I get that. That's gross. <laughs> Ugh. You said you wanted a range. I was just Shh. jumping the gun and... Shh. Saying, don't bring it up anytime Mind soon. your manners. <laughs> I'll do what I damn well please, sir. Manners maketh the man. Ooh, nice reference. <clears throat> I love that reference. That's, it's such a fantastic yeah. reference. Um, so, yeah, if you basically are going to have yourself a long rest here. Is there anything else you want to do before the long rest? Do you want to swap out any spells, for example? Yeah. Well, I think I do it after the long rest, but yeah, yeah I'm going to do that. But you know, just just to keep in mind that you are having a long rest, so you can do things like that. Yeah. Is there anything else anybody wants to do, or are you just going to level your, up? Take take your eight. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not happening. <laughs> That will have to wait until mission accomplished and you are back in town. All right. So what spells would come in handy for you guys? Do, 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 do. Trying to work out what spells would be handy to fight a giant crocodile. <laughs> um, I would like to make a little a stone figurine. Like to start like carving one out. It's like. Uh, like a, a, a little chest beast, but not chest beast. Okay. Do you have? You've got stone mason's tools, or or what? Yes. Okay. Yeah, you can do that. I'm proficient with stone. Um, give me a. Hmm. What would this be? Let's make it a perf performance check to see. You no, know, how well? What 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 is the image you're trying to capture with your sculpture? Um. Just like a little man. Alright. So, give me a performance check. Just like a color. Okay, so you get the rough shape made. Um, it doesn't quite look like a man, but it's getting there. You think after, if with another night or two of, you know, whittling away at this thing that you'll, you'll have something more accurate. Okay, and tomorrow morning I'll give it to one of the kids. Okay, so you're going to give the un the, the unformed one? Or yes. Or you're going to, to work on it a bit more over the next couple of days? You're just going to give this, like, vaguely... <laughs> <laughs> you're going to give it... You know what it's going to look like, right? <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, God, really? <laughs> like what? <laughs> <laughs> like a statue, but it's not a statue. Kind of armless, oh. cylindrical <laughs> man. <laughs> no. Yeah. no I'll bounces work on around. It. I'll, no, I'll, I'll work on it. I'll like, work I'm sorry, on it. I've heard of some strange things to give to a kid. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll work on it. I'll work on it. <laughs> Alright. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I got a rough shape. I'm struggling with the face on the top. You know. Yeah, no, it's all about the head. Yes. <laughs> so sorry, I'll, I'll sorry, finish sorry. it was... after like a week, and then uh, I'll give it to them. Wow. Wow. Uh, that was God. bad. Yeah, I'm sorry, folks. Said. This is <laughs> the roller fan. This this is what you get, uh, middle of the week D and D session, uh, with a tired DM. Um, all right. Mm-hmm. So you catch your eight. You wake up in the morning. Um, you still hear uh, a lot of thunder and stuff out, you know, outside. Uh, there's enough open passages, um, and you can even see that there are some, like, what appear to be air vents, essentially, that have been 
you know, tunnel through the, 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 the rock above you and the ceiling uh, so that there is a constant flow of fresh air into the complex. Um, but you are led out through a different door. This one, um, basically, when you emerge, I must think, it's going to be on the western side of this hill. <clears throat> no, not western. No, sorry, northern side of the hill. Um, and as you're looking at it, you can see there's, it's surrounded by bushes, but it's quite high up. And as you look down, you can actually see that same road that Siren and Cyan noticed from the ship. You intuit that this is where the path ended up. And you can see there's a, like a woven wicker basket that is filled with fresh fish. Off to the side, it has two handles. It is fairly heavy, so it's going to take two people to carry this thing. Definitely not me. <laughs> Just Xerxes, yeah, okay. your idea. Um, Xerxes is going to be up in the sky with Bim scouting down <laughs> to try and find this thing. Um, but yes, you are met by um, old Sorov, um, who is standing there very patiently um, next to the same scale shield. Um, what did I say his name was? Darastrix, there we go. Um, which you recognize Xerxes means dragon. Um, but, and with him is a... a a scrawnier looking lizard folk. I mean, by scrawny, I mean they still, obviously, still quite built and muscular, but he's not as wide as the warriors. Um, and you see that uh, in addition to uh, the spear that he's got in his hand, he also has a short bow slung over his back and a quiver of arrows. Um, <clears throat> and. Um, sort of says to you, uh, this one is called Koj, which means small. <laughs> All right. Um, Everyone small. He says Koj also knows a little bit of the common tongue. He does not speak much of it, but he can understand you as long as you keep your your communications simple enough you know don't 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 give him an essay's worth of orders because he's not going to follow that <laughs> but no go there find safety find food <coughs> kill crocodile mm. <laughs> carry basic. basket carry, carry basket he, ca he will certainly help you with that as long as somebody else helps him too <laughs> And it's a big basket. Could you lend someone else to carry the other bar side of the basket? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Seems like you don't want this plan to succeed. He says... Sian, we actually nominate, n nominated you to carry it. But I'm the captain! We're not oh, you were, boat, you weren't in the meeting, though. Oh, that's true. All right, yeah, fine. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you hoist, and you can just see um, there isn't any rain at the moment. There's quite a brisk wind still, and you do still hear, um, you know, it's still storming. There's still thunder um, rumbling around you and that. Um, as you start making your way down this pathway... Um, the it, it, about an hour or two's worth of work, you start to notice a change in the air. Um, the wind does die down considerably as you move, you know, deeper inland. Um, it's still present, um, and a slight drizzle starts to come down again um, as you do this. Um, and the little guy, Koj, um, basically points forward and he says, Many footsteps that way. <coughs> and he points his clawed fingers towards the north. 
he says ready walk and he he like holds up a thumbs up he's basically asking are you ready to really get started yeah. on this journey i'm going to take flight like i don't know maybe like 50 feet in the air all right and i'm gonna just hover above um yeah the wind isn't too bad at the moment so it won't hinder your flight i'll say um one thing um to note he also sh like he he hefts his spear um and he grabs it closer to the spear point you know along uh, where the haft meets the spear head um and he says careful water he said and and as you walking past one of these like pools of water in this boggy boggy marshy place um he sticks it down into the water and it basically just the whole thing fucking disappears into the water he says danger bog walk where i walk and he starts leading you along this trail and you can feel oh not feel but you can see as he's going along he's actually um fairly confident in the beginning but every once in a while he like pauses for a second and he just like tests the ground with the butt of his spear just to make sure that yes this is solid ground we can move ahead <coughs> he's taking his his duty as um you know, scout fairly ser seriously though he does look up and wonder at xerxes hovering above your lot um and i think that is where we're going to call it for this evening it's now almost what's it 25 past nine um and then we will pick up on the track next week escom willing hopefully we won't have any more load shedding again like last week which really sucked um thank you very much guys for joining us um thank you once again to sirenscape for the awesome sounds thank you to my players for giving me grief and laughs <laughs> i think we all missed out on that D, &D action last week uh, yeah and mm -hmm. D, D is addictive and mm -hmm. we all have that problem <laughs> uh, and thank you very much for the folks in chat who came along to to watch our little adventure um for you guys who are also listening to the podcast i want to thank you guys as well i see we've got a few i was quite igno excited to note there's a couple of viewers from canada and even ireland who have oh. listened in on the, the podcast so oh. it's it's nice to see that we have a, a little bit of reach so i hope you guys are enjoying it uh, there will be some very South African centric things and words, um, but yeah, hopefully it's not so much that you don't understand the gist of things. Um, but yeah, thank you very much, everybody. I am now going to stop the stream. Have a good week and be safe. Uh, cheers. Bye. Cheers.